Stay Hunters, with so many gameplay features, weapon mechanics, and many other changes already being confirmed or showcased for Monster Hunter Wilds, I wanted to go ahead and make another list of things that I'd still like to see come when the full game releases next year. If you have any features that you'd like to see that I don't mention in today's video, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Let's go ahead and get straight into it. First of all, I know that there have been some concerns about the performance of the build at Gamescom. Again, the Gamescom demo seemed to run between 30 and 50 frames per second in 4K resolution on the provided consoles, but there was also a closed door gameplay showcase run on a PC at the Summer Games Fest that ran even better. I know not everyone has a PC to play on, so I really would like to see a performance mode for console Monster Hunter Wilds. For a lot of gamers, myself included, the frame rate and performance is significantly more important than the graphical fidelity of a game. Monster Hunter does look beautiful, but I'd rather run it in regular like 1080p HD at 60 to 100 plus frames than in 4K at only 30 or 40, and I think many of you will agree with me on that one. I really think that, especially with the newest console hardware, Offering your players an option to choose for themselves if they'd like graphics, performance, or some sort of balance needs to be the standard. We've already seen this with many console titles. A recent one that comes to mind off the top of my head is Horizon Forbidden West. My old roommate and I both had bought the game and I took a break from my game to go watch him play for a bit, and I was absolutely shocked at how framey and stuttery it looked. Now I had been running it in performance mode, and he was running the high graphics mode. Having the ability to choose just gives more power to your player and ultimately leads to a better user experience for each and every hunter. With the addition of the NPC hunter helper characters in Sunbreak that could also be used offline, many people found them to be supremely helpful in clearing the late game afflicted monsters when playing either solo or offline. So it shouldn't be a real surprise to anybody to see these guys returning in Monster Hunter Wilds. We also know that you will be able to turn them on or off, so you can still hunt solo or with randoms via an SOS flare when you're playing online. However, I would really like to see these guys limited to certain story hunts and then only be fully available after completing the story. Now some of you might disagree with me on this one, but personally, one of the key draws of the Monster Hunter franchise as a whole is overcoming a difficult hunt by slowly learning the monster and improving one hunt at a time. For me, Tigrex in Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, my first game, was a huge wall, and by fighting him and failing tens of times, the feeling that I got when I finally quote, got good, and beat him was just unmatched. I think that having three other hunters available to you at all times could really diminish this aspect of Monster Hunter greatly. Again, I have no issue with this being an aid for grinding through the high health and hard hitting end game monsters. So I, again, would just like to see this feature only be available for maybe a couple of the important, more flagship story quests, and then only become fully available to use in the post story or endgame. Since Endemic Life and Rare Endemic Life are making a comeback in Monster Hunter Wilds, I'd really like to see a further expansion on how you get to place them in your house. In Iceborne, we had an awesome aquarium and a garden area to place them down, and I'd actually like to see this taken to a new level. In real life, I'm a huge enjoyer of going to the zoo. Anytime that I travel or move to a new place, I always make a point to check out their zoo. I want to see a massive area for my endemic life to be placed, even more so than in the Iceborne house. I also know that most of you really love the endemic life of world, so I think that you all will agree with me that having your own massive sort of zoo and aquarium to fill out with all kinds of rare endemic life would be just an amazing cherry on top to Monster Hunter Wilds. Now, I've spoken in the past how I feel that underwater combat could be amazing with modern refinement, and since we do have confirmation that Monster Hunter Wilds has some underwater areas that you can swim around in and traverse through, many hunters are hoping to see it return, if not in Wilds, at least in its Master Rank expansion. I'm still not entirely sold on Monster Hunter continuing this feature, so let me know your thoughts on this one down in the comments. In Monster Hunter Wilds, we will be able to carry two weapons out into the field at once. 
one on our hunter and one in a pouch on the sacred. You can swap weapons by mounting your sacred and pressing right on the d-pad. Now this will allow for a lot more options to help counter certain monsters, however my main concern is the way that skills, decorations, and potentially charms or talismans will work in wilds. If it stays like previous title, weapons with vastly different skills, for example if you wanted to run gunlance and bow, they will have a difficult time building a set that will bring out the best of both weapons. My wish for wilds is that we get combination decorations back in a similar vein to Iceborne, but with a lot more skill diversity. That way, you don't have to bring two weapons with similar skills, like with charge blade and gun lance, you know, artillery, guarding, attack boost, etc. Those will work together. Or only having to build for one weapon while entirely neglecting the skills of the other, or having to build halfway for both weapons, being unable to reach the maximum potential of either weapon. I think that combination decorations, or even multi-skill charms and talismans, with a wider skill diversity, could help us be better able to utilize both weapons at the same time. Another thing I really want to see is a wide variety of brand new monsters. I personally would like to see more than half of the total roster being totally new to the Monster Hunter franchise. Now of course, I always love to see my favorite monsters return in a new game or in a new generation, but I think that the charm of new monsters is pretty much unmatched. For example, Ray Dao, the newly revealed apex monster of the windswept plains and wilds, is already fast becoming one of my favorite monsters and I haven't even got to hunt him yet. His coloration, attacks, sound design, and overall look is just so unique and amazing, and I'd love to see even more new favorites come in wilds. Again, I'm not against some fan favorite monsters coming back. But I'm at a point where I'd like to see monsters that are either brand new or that have only been in one or two games to come back instead of something like Zenogre or even my favorite monster Nargakuga. Now this might not be a super popular opinion, but monster fatigue is definitely a thing and I know that quite a decent chunk of the community is vocal about feeling that fatigue now. Just think of how fun it is to get into a totally new fight. Even if you're a longtime veteran of the series, if a monster is new, you still might be able to extrapolate some idea of how the hunt will go based on previous experiences with similar monsters, but you really can't know it until you hunt that brand new monster for the first time. Now of course, I know that it is difficult, especially after 6 generations of Monster Hunter, for the team at Capcom to come up with new and exciting monsters, but I really think that having a huge chunk of the roster being brand new would help breathe even more life and excitement into Monster Hunter Wilds. Now with that being said, bring back Great Jaggy. Please and thank you Capcom. With confirmation of monsters having different difficulty levels, for those of you who've played Monster Hunter now, it's very similar looking to that, I want to see them use that difficulty level system to keep all monsters, whether they're early game, mid game, or late game monsters, viable to hunt in the end game grind of wilds. We did have a system sort of like this in Sunbreak, where you needed different afflicted materials to get certain augments. The low level first tier of augments came from the low level afflicted monsters, and the higher later tier of augments came from the harder more endgame style afflicted monsters. Now personally in World and Iceborne I really didn't like that we only had like maybe 5 or so monsters that were genuinely worth farming for decorations in the endgame, I can't even tell you how many times I've killed Tiastra. But honestly, one of world's greatest additions was the Greatest Jagras quest during Base World, where the first large monster that you ever hunt in the game was dialed up and made super strong compared to its normal version and given an insane decoration drop rate to encourage you to hunt this lower level monster that you probably wouldn't hunt otherwise. Using this star difficulty system in a similar way to how they did it in Rise and Sunbreak, I think would be a great way to keep monster fatigue at bay where you're not hunting the same monster a hundred times for one thing, and this would allow you to hunt every monster at a high difficulty, giving you good or at least usable rewards from any monster that you do end up hunting in the endgame. I would love to see seamless co-op story missions. This was again a massive pain point in the early stages of base Monster Hunter World, but by comparison was a complete non-issue in Monster Hunter Rise. With skippable cutscenes, the pausing in single player, and a whole slew of other quality of life features returning here in Wilds, 
I really just hope that they make the story able to be progressed through in co-op without any hitches. I love playing with my friends, I did it for my first Sunbreak playthrough, and I need this to be a thing in Wilds. Now they seem to have learned from the negative feedback of Worlds campaign, so my hopes for this feature are pretty high. So to keep this video from being as long as my last two videos, I will call it there. Again, if you have any wishes of your own for Monster Hunter Wilds that aren't confirmed yet, definitely drop a comment down below. If you did enjoy today's video, be sure to leave a like, as it's a totally free way to support the channel, and it helps YouTube know to suggest this video to other hunters. If you're new to my channel, new to Monster Hunter, or if you're just looking for more Monster Hunter Wilds content, you should definitely subscribe. This channel is going to be the best place for Monster Hunter Wild news, sets, guides, and much, much more, and subscribing is the best way to make sure that you never miss an upload. If you want to check me out on any of my other socials, all the links to those are in the description. I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I wish you all a good day, and happy hunting.